Hello all, I'm Professor Dragan Illich from the School of Public Health and Preventive Medicine and welcome to this uh, video presentation in which we're going to cover the essentials of likelihood ratios. So here are the objectives for Module 3 EBCP where we're going to focus on the second and third um, uh, learning outcomes uh, that relate to likelihood ratios and how they, um, I guess, fit into the whole um, testing algorithm. So, um, first thing I'll say is that you don't need to know how to calculate likelihood ratios. Um, we're more focused on you being able to interpret them. However, for those of you who have an inquisitive mind, here is the formula for positive likelihood ratios. Um, so, the, the, the strength of um, likelihood ratios is that they use or rely on um, the test characteristics, so sensitivity and specificity. <clears throat> so as we mentioned um, in one of the earlier um, videos, uh, sensitivity and specificity never change, uh, whereas uh, predictive values uh, are limited uh, to a large extent um, on the prevalence of the disease or, or the condition that we're investigating, um, uh, which then uh, limits the generalizability of um, applying predictive values to different contexts. Likelihood ratios um, don't rely on pre um, um, prevalence, uh, or sorry, don't rely on the predictive values, um, and hence, hopefully, over the next few slides will show uh, why they're more powerful from that point of view. So again, um, positive likelihood ratio, um, if you wanted to calculate it, um, it would be sensitivity divided by one minus specificity. So basically, positive likelihood ratios are telling us if a patient tests positive for this particular test, how much does it increase the probability of them having the condition? On the flip side, we've got our negative likelihood ratio. Um, the formula for that is one minus sensitivity divided by specificity. So basically a negative likelihood ratio is telling us if a patient tests negative for this test, how much does it decrease the probability that they have the condition? So you can have, well, you can tell a lot about likelihood ratios um, just by looking at their values. So if you've got a likelihood ratio of one, it's basically telling us that the test is useless. Um, a likelihood ratio of one, you think about it, similar lines to an odds ratio or relative risk of one, um, indicates no change. No difference. Uh, positive likelihood ratios, um, anything approaching 10 or above um, results in a large increase in the probability that someone does have the condition um, when they test positive. Um, so what we're looking at, um, at, at, at trying to do is um, utilize as many tests um, that have you know, a large positive likelihood ratio um, above 10. Negative likelihood ratios, um, if a person tests negative, the closer the negative likelihood ratio is to zero, the better it is at ruling out the disease or condition. So three things, I guess, to, to take uh, from this particular slide. If your likelihood ratio is um, one or close to one, um, no, no real benefit in using it. Um, any likelihood ratio approaching 10 or above um, is great at ruling in uh, the condition. Um, any likelihood ratio um, that approaches zero, so you know, 0 0.001, 0 0.005, whatever it may be, the closer it is to zero, the better. Well, the better it is at ruling out uh, the condition. So what I thought I'd do is just over the next few slides, just give you an example of how um, likelihood ratios um, can be utilised, um, I guess, when creating a, um, a specific uh, testing algorithm. Um, so this is um, uh, likelihood ratios for um, pancreatic cancer, um, looking at different, I guess, tests you can use. Um, so TI, in this case, being a fancy way of you know, saying whether or not people smoke, tobacco index. Um, we've got jaundice, um, glycemic disturbance, uh, we've got a blood test for um, a cancer antigen, 
Um, then we've got ultrasound, C, um, CT, um, and then um, endos endoscopy. Um, and so we've got the, the positive likelihood ratios and the negative likelihood ratios. And so just by eyeballing it, um, you can see um, the first two um, uh, are fairly close to one. So on their own, not the gra greatest of tests to rule in um, or even rule out the disease, uh, or in this case, um, the condition, uh, pancreatic cancer. Um, the blood test, um, looking good in terms of both you know, giving us a, a fairly good indicator of whether or not someone does or doesn't have the condition um, based on you know, a likelihood ratio of five and you know, a, a negative likelihood ratio of um, 0.29. Um, similar for um, ultrasound, um, CT and endoscopy. So here we have a nomogram, um, and hopefully I'll make it as simplistic as possible because um, they shouldn't be, well, it shouldn't be too difficult to, to understand. Uh, but on the um, left-hand side here, we've got our pretest probability. So you would plop in whatever the prevalence of the condition may be. Um, you would then, so let's say it's 0.1% um, of people in country X have uh, this particular condition. Uh, we've got a likelihood ratio, so let's say the likelihood ratio of this particular test, if you test positive, is 15. Um, what you would then do is draw a straight line, if I can do that, and you end up with your post-test probability. In this case, it's around 5%. Uh, so it's gone from 0.1% all the way up to 5%. So what we'll do is uh, take the example of uh, pancreatic cancer. So in Australia, it's a very rare disease, 0.01 uh, of a percent um, in terms of its prevalence. Uh, so we've plotted that um, with the blue line. Um, we've got our first test. So we're seeing whether or not our patient um, is jaundiced. Uh, we've pl plotted the um, positive likelihood ratio of um, 1.92. Draw a straight line and our post-test probability jumps from 0.1 to, sorry, from 0 0.01 uh, to 0.2. Um, so then we can say, okay, well, yeah, whether or not it's much of a difference, we'll move on to the next test. So the thing to note now is that our pretest probability has gone from 0 0.001, so it wasn't even on this scale, it was so low. Um, it's jumped up to, to 0.2 now because our patient has already tested positive to our first test. Um, so we've got whether or not they're a smoker, again, plop it through, increases a little bit more to 0.3. Next test, now we're starting with 0.3 of a percent, um, positive uh, for our next test, which has a likelihood ratio of 3.4. Um, and you can sort of see where we're going. We're building up um, in terms of our, our probability. Still not, not a whole lot here, but um, it's definitely trending one way. Uh, so now they've tested positive to three tests. Um, we'll um, order our blood test, so a cancer antigen test, uh, testing positive to that. Um, all of a sudden, we've got a significant increase, so from 0.7% to 4%. Next one. Um, now that they've uh, tested positive to all those um, tests so far, um, our pretest probability is 4% or thereabouts. Um, we may decide to conduct an ultrasound, so we're jumping up to 10%. Next test um, may be a CT, um, and as you can see, we're getting higher and higher um, until we may decide to do the last test, um, so endoscopy, uh, to really rule in uh, the condition. So hopefully those series of slides have demonstrated um, how you can, I guess, sit down and work out which barrage of tests, for, for lack of a better term, uh, you would want to use in order to um, effectively rule in or rule out a particular condition. Um, and I guess the really neat thing about it is um, you can use um, all of the tests, e even those ones that you know, aren't particularly great in isolation, all seem to add up when you, you know, uh, form them as part of a, um, a, a diagnostic test algorithm. 
So that's it from me uh, regarding um, white good ratios. Hopefully you found that um, of some use. Uh, please feel free to contact me if you have any questions um, on the email uh, address shown. Thank you.